So here we are on the TS228A QTS um, desktop. Now within here, as we can see, if we go to the file manager, now I've tried to save us a lot of time in the long run, try and keep this as short as possible, but it's always tough. As you can see here, I've created um, several directories of files. I've only just uploaded some of them, and these are quite large scale files. We've got like 600 meg, another 600, 1.2, Four gig and in here we have more files all of these were used in 4k testing at uh, an earlier date and as you can see that again quite large files and I've either duplicated the existing files that I've got to create larger directories and some of these directories have got fewer files some of them have got more some of them have got the same and what I've tried to create is a nice big balance of files with us uh, for so we can play so straight away if we go to the storage manager here at the top left we can figure out and see that the amount of storage we're utilizing and the amount that we've got left on the drive, and I believe there is a 3TB WD red inside this device, and how much is being utilized. So how much space is being occupied by these um, by the storage, uh, the files that I put onto these, and we've got the snapshot space. We'll get to that later on. So in here we can see that I've only got the one hard drive inside, and we can see just how much data is being how much is available. So it was a 3TB disk, but of course, those numbers are always rounded up. And of course, we can look at how much storage is being occupied and utilized so far. So we can see how much multimedia is being taken up by all these files and how much is available. So once we've got all of our files and our NAS, as usual, there we are, big pile of files, and we want to create our snapshots. First, we either want to decide whether we want to do it manually whenever we see fit, or that we want to create a schedule. Now, I take my word for it, there is a schedule that you can set up, but today what we're gonna do is we're gonna initiate a bunch of manual snapshots to make it easier. So the first thing we wanna do, this is our drive that we've created our volume, our 3TB volume, is we go up to snapshot, and we want to go into data volume one, the volume that we're working within. Now volume one is just a default name, and this is what I've used for our snapshot. So straight away, what I'm going to do is take a snapshot. Now, once you set up the QNAP for the first time, it will ask you if you want to reserve some space for your snapshot. Now, I believe when this was set up, I reserved some space for the snapshot, and so that this will be occupying the space. And how that grows or shrinks, we'll talk about later in the video. But, as you can see, while the snapshots are in effect, because you, you will need at least two gig of memory for this to run, the, uh, the performance may decrease during snapshot taking and while the snapshots are being supported with every change taking place. So we're gonna start creating our snapshot and first things first, remember we're doing a manual one. Uh, we will do this one so it will stay for 20 days because what we could do is a rotational effect or you can do a permanent snapshot so it never goes away. So what we'll do is we'll call this snap one. And we'll have it stay for 20 days, why not? And what we'll do is we'll get the snapshot being created. So remember, this is happening in real time. And just to display that point, I'm going to keep talking while this carries on making the snapshot for us in the background. And what this is doing is creating a snapshot. And there we go. It's already done a snapshot of all of our files that we've created. Now, if we have a look here, here's our snapshot here. And we've got it listed by list. And you can see the capacity of this snapshot is pretty big. It's 528 gigabytes. And that's the, the actual area that we are occupying so we'll get that timeline view up it's not going to let us do the timeline because we've only got the one snapshot so our snapshot has been created so we'll come out of that and this is going to disable the snapshot protection in the background because remember we're doing manual snapshots on this occasion we can of course create a schedule now if we go into the storage and snapshot monitor we can see if we go to the snapshot tab how much of the space we've allocated for our snapshot, in this case, we've given it full space, has now been occupied by that. So here we go, the space utilization of the snapshot. And we can see the snapshot space that's been used, so barely any at this time. If we come out of that, what we'll do is we're now gonna start doing things that can change these files. So first things first, let's change the names of some of these files. Let's call this one Apple. We'll call this one and this may seem like much, we'll go for banana. But imagine you were working with code and uh, directories of files. Changing of names could actually make a great deal of difference. Uh, we'll call this Cucumber. Now at the same time, we'll look in test three where we have loads of files just sitting here ready to go. 
And in test three, we're going to act like we've accidentally deleted test three. We'll delete it permanently, as you can see there. And now, those are, these are being deleted right now permanently, as you can see, and now they're gone. So that could have easily happened by accident, you've deleted a bunch of files. Now remember, imagine you, all the snapshots we're talking about today, although I'm actioning them all manually, if you set this up so you took one snapshot a day, we're gonna pretend that all the snapshots we've made today are daily. So we're gonna pretend each one of them was an individual day. So we've renamed three files and we've deleted an entire directory. So now we're gonna take another snapshot. And again, if this was an automated procedure, it would have taken a snapshot. And once again, now we've deleted a huge chunk of storage. So now, remember that old one was 52892. And we're going to have that next snapshot. And again, we're going to use the same thing, but this time we're going to call it snap2. And now it's going to take another snapshot. And again, do bear in mind that if you were doing this on an automated schedule, you would leave a day or half a day, or if it's that important, hourly snapshots if you're creating a lot of files. So as you can see, our second snapshot has now been created. So here's our first snapshot from earlier and our second one. And again, because certain files now live in the snapshot between snap one and snap two, you'll see the capacity hasn't changed. But from here, we can divulge and go into the snapshot. So if we look at snapshot one from earlier and we go into multimedia, there's test all three, and we can go all the way in and there's our files. However, if we go into snapshot, uh, the earlier snapshot, and we can compare revisions, test all three is still gone. And again, that's because this is the most recent against what we're doing here. So now, what about if we want to, comp you know, well, let's do something cataclysmic. Let's delete pretty much all of our files at once. So now we're gonna delete these files delete that we'll leave that to delete those in the background and at the same time I'm going to duplicate two of these files and then rename them so copy two and we'll add them to a new directory as well so we'll create a brand new directory to, um, so new directory and again directory depends how you want to pronounce it and now we're making duplicates of those files adding into the new directory. So again, we can see this process happening in the background. And again, of course, depending on which NAS you use, and the CPU, and if you're using SSD caching, this process will take a differing amount of time. But again, as you can see, and that will keep doing it because I'm running about eight things off this network, so do ignore where it says network cannot be found. I'm running quite a few devices on this network at once. And now, We've created the new directory with the files inside. We've deleted all of those files from earlier and we've got these original three files here. And once again, we're gonna take another snapshot. And again, I'm sorry to be repetitious, but do remember in a perfect scenario, the, this would be semi-autonomous each day. So it's gonna run them up and there's our two snapshots from earlier. And now we take a third snapshot. Hopefully this loads. And we call this one snap three. And now we're taking our third snapshot. Now, the two key things we want to remember here is one, if you were running a large scale operation from your NAS every single day and files are being deleted or moved or duplicated, or once again, you could have a file that's infected. The beauty of this system is that not only have we now got different revisions of our entire layout of files, so here's our latest one, and that's got, again, new directory, it's got those three, but all the test files are gone. That same directory in this older revision still has all of those files. And then, remember, this is still the same multimedia directory. We go to the oldest one, and all of those files are still there. Now, what's quite cool about this is we don't have to restore the entire volume if there's only certain files we want back. Because you must have noticed when I deleted, I deleted permanently. And if you don't believe me, these are ones from earlier. We will delete all of those files permanently and they're gone. But what we'll do now is we're going to go back to the earliest revision. Actually, we'll go to the second earliest revision and we're going to re reinstate test all one. So we restore the folder. 
and now all those files will be restored from the snapshot. And there you are, successfully asked for restoring items, and now it's restoring from that snapshot. And what we're going to find is in that directory, the directory we've been playing with, it is going to restore this within the snapshot background and pop it back into that directory. Now, we can't really multi-screen this, as you can see, but once that number is restored to 100%, we would have restored that directory that was earlier deleted you know, quote unquote, in error. So what we'll do is we'll come back to when that's at 100% to show you that that has been restored. And there we have it, test all one, back in the original directory, which is quite nice. Um, and the original dates, as you can see, it has kept the original dates of creation, not the date I've created it. By the way, it's 28 minutes past two uh, on the 2nd of, of the 8th of Feb, even. Bloody silly calendar. Anyway. So as you can see, retrieving files is very, very easy indeed. Likewise, they, there is a new directory created called Recently Snapshot, where you can actually go and look at these revisions on a file level. Now, what's quite nice is the ability to navigate between these recovered files so that you can actually choose versions, which is you know quite advantageous and quite useful, particularly on a low level NAS that's as cost effective as this bad boy. But extending slightly more of what we can do with the Snapshot Manager, we can look at some of the other things that having um, the snapshot manager on a cost-effective NAS can, can do for you. For a start, some of you may have noticed this bit at the top here that says guaranteed snapshot space. Now what this is, is a way of making sure that the device will only use a certain amount of space. And once it's filled up that space, it will start deleting the very oldest one. So you never have to worry about it overfilling. Likewise, because a lot of these snapshots in this mode will live on the same volume, or not on the same volume, but on the same hard drive as the NAS. As the um, full size of that volume does f fill up, it may fill up the drive completely and need some space from the snapshot. And guaranteed snapshot space will ensure that they aren't overwritten or will ensure that they start to be overwritten when space is needed. Now, Snapshot technology, although it isn't new, the fact that you've got it within a NAS and so easy to access and in the background is, you know, it's a big, big deal for people buying these NAS as file servers. And likewise, when you're creating all of these snapshots in the background, the fact that you can navigate between them means that, you know, no file is ever truly lost. Um, it should also be mentioned that when these snapshots are made and kept in this other snapshot area, they are completely removed from the primary volume insofar as any changes or anything that could affect the original files. Remember, snapshots aren't designed to protect you from mechanical failure. They're meant to protect you from data loss, from being overwritten and from being compromised or deleted. Now, if we disappear, one of the things we would like to consider is what happens when we want to restore everything. Uh, we're not going to do the full rest restore, but if we go over here and we'll, re we'll exit out of the snapshot manager, and again, you would like to keep that running in the background, but let's delete everything. We won't delete that because that won't let us, but if we delete everything there, and this time we're going to do a snapshot where it's all gone and all deleted permanently, as you can see. So now these files are long gone. So it's going to delete all 52 files and they're gone. And what we're left with, and again, that'll keep happening, got so many NAS connected, that all of those files are gone now. The, remember, the snapshot directory is removed from the other directory. It won't be able to be accessed and compromised in the way that the other files could have been. And what we'll do is we'll do one final snapshot of our now completely deleted database that we could have accidentally deleted or a virus as it has got inside and deleted. So now we'll take a snapshot of our new bare nothing uh, directories. So once again, we delete and we'll call this one snap4. And we'll let the snapshot be created. Now, it is also worth highlighting that these snapshots do not duplicate. The, you are not creating a fresh 600 gig every single time. For a start, it's definitely not doing that because no hard drive or SSD in the world right now could have created 600 odd gig 
four times in a matter of seconds. What's happening is it remembers and keeps revision histories on original files. And even when you change the names, those revisions still continue. So here we can see the latest revision has got all of that stuff deleted. I must have forgotten some now. Oh, there we go, because it got created. It was still in the process of being created. But there's all of our other directories from earlier. But say we want to go back to the beginning, and I'm going to want to because I want these files back. I haven't finished uh, 4K testing some of the newer devices. So if I wanted to pull these files back, you can either select them all, select them individually, or go down here to clone, restore, or revert snapshot. Now in a restore, you can restore just a folder or restore the file, uh, the folder to a set directory. So you can restore it to another NAS or another hard drive, basically not into the original directory, effectively letting you duplicate some of your files and recreating scenarios as you would in a VM and some of their snapshots, but on a simple file level. Next, we could clone a lot of these snapshots. And with these, what it does is it lets us create all of these snapshots, move them over to another directory so we can save some of them from deletion. But remember, you will have to maintain and keep all of the snapshots that have happened before it. Afterwards, it doesn't matter, but before it, it's very important. Now, reverting a snapshot volume is when we want to recover everything. And once again, we can choose to either do a local revert, which means it will overwrite the original hard drive and delete all of our snapshots that have happened since, because obviously you only ever keep the previous snapshots and not the future. So a local revert would wipe over everything but get all of our files back, but get rid of the snapshots. Or restore folder two lets us select an individual directory, either on a remote location, so another NAS, or create a new folder, or once again, a different localized folder. So at the moment, they live in the multimedia folder, whereas if I clicked OK now, and I won't because it will slow things down, it would restore to a completely different directory. So once again, we don't, if the original folder or directory is compromised in some way, we don't have to restore the files to that location. And once again, just remember that you can always flick between the revisions. You can go through the timeline mode, and the more snapshots you take every single day, or every day of every week, the more you can go back in time and recover those files. But we're gonna go more and more into detail on snapshots as the weeks come along. But I wanted to really focus and highlight on the fact that this facility is now available for um, more cost-effective NASs and not just big Intel and AMD numbers. And actually, before I go, I kept mentioning it, but I never set up the schedule because scheduling and going through some of the settings will help you refine the snapshots that you're going to create, refine how many you can keep, and obviously a lot of that is based on the CPU, and once you've set up the schedule for it to happen once every day at a certain time of day, and the smart snapshot, of course, gives you the idea of reducing the number that you're going to create, it gives you the ability to have a far more self-managed backup of your files. The same thing goes with changing the amount of space on the hard drive that you've dedicated to your snapshots. Once again, this is something you will see during the setup of the QNAP NAS. It will ask you how many percent do you want to dedicate to snapshots. And again, you don't have to do that at the beginning, but then you can always set it up later on. But as you can see, the files that we've created, because we've made some changes, it has obviously grown more than the original directory, but there's no denying that we haven't utilized all of the snapshot space. It hasn't made a huge duplicated run of all of those files. We have 632 gig of files on the device, and our snapshot is 640, so which isn't too shabby. But thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to telling you more, but do keep up to date on everything in QNAP. Do check out some of their new cost-effective Realtek ones, and in the future we will be comparing snapshots on this device with other Intel devices, as well as some ZFS and BTRFS systems too. But thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in buying NAS, do visit the guys at span.com. If you want to learn more about NAS or sort of more wordy version of this, do visit me at nascompares.com. And finally, if you've got any any questions, find me on Twitter and send me a message at Robbie on the Tube. Thanks for watching.